The U.S. President Donald Trump has said that he will not allow America to become a migrant camp. Trump's remarks came as his administration tried to defend its controversial practice of separating migrant children from their parents at the U.S.-Mexico border. The U.S. White House has said that majority of the migrant children in detention centers were sent to the cross the border with strangers and were not accompanied by their parents. The U.N. has asked America to treat migrants with dignity and respect in accordance to international laws referring to the U.S.'s policy of separating children from their parents. The U.N. said that the family unit must be preserved. German Chancellor Angela Merkel has said that the government aims at significantly reducing the number of people entering Germany. Merkel said German authorities would not let in migrants who had already registered in other European countries, but also stressed that there would not be an, an quote-unquote automatic mechanism to reject refugees at the border. Five migrants were killed and more than 100 were rescued by the Libyan Coast Guard when a boat carrying migrants suffered damages. The International Organization for Migration has tracked over a million migrants in Libya who are exposed to numerous risks including smuggling, trafficking, kidnapping, abuse, detention and torture. But most migrants attempting to reach Europe from Africa take the sea route from Libya to Italy. Bosnian police blocked over 200 migrants who were demanding passage into Croatia at a border crossing between the two countries. On June 18, some 100 Croatian riot police had also blocked the crossing. According to a report published by the European Asylum Support Office, the number of asylum seekers in the European Union dropped by 44% from 2016 and is expected to continue to decrease. A Los Angeles judge has cancelled a June 21st hearing during which a lawyer for an adult film star Stormy Daniels planned to seek the resumption of her lawsuit against the US President Donald Trump and his longtime lawyer Michael Cohen. South Korea and the United States have agreed to delay a joint military exercise. The two countries were widely expected to announce the suspension of a large-scale military drills this week after U.S. President Donald Trump surprised officials in Seoul and Washington when he pledged to end war games after his summit in Singapore with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. The U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has said that he would visit North Korea to resume talks about Pyongyang's commitments of complete denuclearization. South Korea and North Korea have agreed to field unified teams at some of the events in the upcoming Asian Games, which will take place in Indonesia this August. The agreement came after officials from the two sides held talks to improve inter-Korean sports cooperation. The Foreign Affairs Minister of the United Arab Emirates has urged Iran aligned Houthi rebels to withdraw from the embattled Yemeni port of Hodeidah, which is being bombarded by Saudi-led coalition. Israel has indicted a former cabinet minister for allegedly spying for France. The country's internal security service has said the minister who held the energy ministry in the 1990s was recruited by Iranian agencies while he was living in Nigeria. The minister allegedly visited Iran twice where he held meetings with handlers.
A van struck four people at a Dutch music festival on June 18, killing one and injuring three. The van driver later fled the scene. A Moscow court has ordered the taxi driver who drove into pedestrians in the Kremlin on June 16 to be detained in prison for two months pending trial. Around eight people were injured in the crash. Philippines has struck down an order for the deportation of an Australian nun after she joined a political rally sparking celebrations among her supporters. The 71-year-old Catholic nun Patricia Fox, who is the head of a congression, had invited the ire of President Rodrigo Duterte after she was spotted at a rally in support of human rights earlier this year. A Sikh leader from Afghanistan, Avtar Singh Khalsa, will be representing the Hindu and Sikh communities in the country's parliament, bringing hope for the betterment of the country's dwindling minorities. Hundreds of Afghan peace marchers arrived in the capital city of Kabul after spending the holy month of Ramadan crossing the arid and war-torn country. The march was triggered by a car bomb in Hemlin on March 23rd that killed at least 14 people and wounded dozens. French President Emmanuel Macron scolded a teenager after the boy addressed him by his nickname Manu. Macron said the teen to address him as Mr. President. The incident took place when Macron was attending a ceremony to commemorate of the June 18 appeal in France. Monsoon rains have triggered floods and landslides in southern Myanmar. Several homes have been submerged and over a hundred people have been displaced. The rains have also damaged a famous Buddhist pagoda. A Malian migrant who was dubbed Spider-Man after he rescued a child hanging off a balcony by scaling an apartment block in the French capital of Paris met the president of Mali. The president congratulated him for his act of bravery. German carmaker Audi's chief executive Rupert Stadler has been arrested on charges of fraud over diesel emission scandal. Audi has been accused of having sold at least 210,000 diesel engine cars fitted with cheat software in the US and Europe starting in the year 2009. The luxury car maker is also being investigated for allegations of fraud and illegal product promotion. Motorists in the crime-ridden Venezuelan capital of Caracas are seeking safety through a buddy app which dispatches security crews to stranded drivers who request help. Violence in Venezuela shot up due to the country's ongoing economy crisis. Chinese e-commerce giant JD.com has announced that it has secured an investment worth $550 million from Google as part of a new strategic partnership between the two leading tech companies. Iraq's only Kurdish airline launched on June 18 with a flight to Sweden after years of delays owing to a blockade on Iraqi Kurdistan's foreign air links. The Iraqi federal government had imposed the air blockade after Iraqi Kurdistan voted overwhelmingly for independence in a non-binding referendum rejected as illegal by Baghdad. The Sri Krishna committee is likely to propose that the critical data of Indians be stored in servers located within the Indian territory to protect the data of Indian citizens. The move will impact tech giants like Google, Facebook and Amazon amongst others.
Award winning Slovak film called Little Harbour was screened at the European Union Film Festival in the Indian capital of New Delhi. Inspired by a true story, Little Harbour tells a tale of two children who feel safer on the streets than at home. Saudi Arabia's national football team landed safely in Russia after one of the engines on the plane carrying the players to a World Cup match appeared to catch fire. However, the team's spokesperson has said that report of the fire was incorrect. England football fans and a top British diplomat paid tribute to those who died in the Battle of Stalingrad during World War II in a ceremony ahead of England's match against Tunisia in Russia. Wooden statues inspired by the ongoing World Cup and Russian-Serbian friendship were crafted in a coastal resort town of in the northern Russia, eight artists from all over the country competed in the wood carving festival. Fans of 2018 FIFA World Cup in Russia were in for a visual delight when they spotted traditional Russian nesting dolls decorated in football themes at a Moscow souvenir market. The FIFA frenzy has managed to reach India in the northern Indian city of Chandigarh. Balrat Singh, an artist, carved a miniature trophy of the World Cup on a piece of chalk as a ode to the sport and its fans. The much ridiculed bronze bust of Cristiano Ronaldo had made Era report in Portugal was replaced with a version bearing more of a resemblance to the football superstar. Hundreds of people flocked to a harbour in Hong Kong to watch the annual Dragon Boat Race. The race is the highlight of the Dragon Boat Festival, a traditional Chinese celebration after racing the rowers splashed water at each other as a blessing of good fortune. The Red Bull Rubik Cube World Championship qualifiers took place in London with hopefuls competing for a place at the championship finals in the Boston city of the United States later this year. A hat belonging to French Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte purportedly picked off the battlefield after his defeat at the Battle of Waterloo in the year 1815 went up for auction in France. In a heartwarming gesture and charity, the Eastern Indian city of Kolkata celebrated the FIFA World Cup with orphan children. Britain's Queen Elizabeth attended the Garter Day ceremony at St. George's Chapel near Windsor Castle along with other members of the royal family. A 20-metre high sculpture of an ancient Egyptian tomb made from over 7,000 red and white barrels has taken temporary residence amid the docks in a lake in London's Hyde Park.
The official Instagram account of Bollywood actress Kangana Ranaut, run by her team, has shared a picture from her upcoming film Mani Karnika, the Queen of Jhansi, on the death anniversary of Rani Lakshmi Bai. The picture's caption read, "Remembering one of the bravest women that ever lived." Kangana will be seen portraying Rani Lakshmi Bai, while Sonu Sood portrays a warrior. International superstar Jackie Chan's memoir Never Grow Up will be released in November. The upcoming book which is being translated by Jeremy Tiang will have an account from his youth with the China Drama Academy to his near death experiences on and off camera. The 64 year old actor will also write about making movies in Hong Kong and Hollywood. Dark Horses Belgium began the campaign from Group G with a 3-0 win over World Cup debutants Panama. The Central American nation gave a good account of themselves by putting up a fight in the opening half. After a goalless first half, Dries Mertens' 47-minute wonder strike helped unlock the Panama defense in Sochi. Romelu Lukaku then netted a brace to seal a comfortable victory for the Red Devils. In the other group G clash that took place late last night, England needed the skipper Harry Kane to help secure a last gas victory over Tunisia. Kane's 11th minute strike was cancelled out by Ferjani Sassi's 35th minute penalty, but Gareth Southgate's side kept knocking on the door and got the winner in injury time as an unmarked Kane headed home from close range to secure all three points. In the early action on Monday took place in Group F where Sweden edged South Korea by a solitary goal at Nizhny Novgorod Stadium. Both teams failed to find the net in the first half in what remained a closely contested battle but Sweden came away with the win courtesy of a penalty awarded with the help of video assistant referee skipper Andreas Grönqvist converted the squad's kick to secure the vital three points that takes them alongside Mexico at the top of the standings. Tuesday's action sees the last four teams feature in their first game of the 2018 World Cup. First up will be 2014 quarter finalists Colombia facing Japan in the group H clash at Saransk. This will be the second successive meeting at the World Cup between these two nations. Jose Pekerman's side had cruised to a 4-1 win over the Samurai Blues who finished bottom and without a win in the previous edition. Poland conclude the first round of the group stage matches. They take on an African powerhouse Senegal in the other group H match at Moscow. This is Senegal's first appearance at a World Cup since making their sensational debut in 2002 where they went all the way up till the quarter finals. Poland will continue relying on their captain and star man Robert Lewandowski who netted a record 16 goals during the qualifying phase. Host Russia too are in action for the second time at the World Cup. They take on Egypt. Both teams come into the match of the back of contrasting results. Russia cruised to a 5-0 win over Saudi Arabia in the curtain raiser, while Egypt went down 1-0 to a late goal against Uruguay. But the Pharaohs have received a huge boost with their star man Mohamed Salah declared fit to play. Staying with World Cup related news, Croatian forward Nikola Kalinic has been sent home from the World Cup after his refusal to take the field in their first match against Nigeria. Kalinic reportedly complained about a back injury as his reason for refusing to come on. Croatia will not be able to replace a 30-year-old and will now have to play the rest of the tournament with 22 players. Meanwhile, FIFA have opened a probe into the alleged homophobic chants from Mexican fans during L3 shock win over reigning world champions Germany. The Mexican Football Federation have been fined 9 times for similar incidents during the qualifying campaigns. The chants were reportedly directed towards German captain and goalkeeper Manuel Neuer.